Tonight on Team Voodoo Adventures. Oh, he's right there. The hunt continues in the Atchafalaya Basin. That's why you never put your hand inside a gator's mouth. He's doing something kind of cuckoo. Oh, got off. Of course. If I wouldn't have known to keep my hands out of the snap zone, that could have been very bad. All that and more next. Morning in the Atchafalaya Basin. Today is day two of the alligator hunting season. This will be my 14th year of hunting these prehistoric monsters of the swamp. And this year, instead of setting lines and catching whatever comes near, I'm specifically targeting the biggest and the oldest gators I can find. My goal is to maintain the longest average for my tags on record. Right now, the record length average is 7.5 feet. Let's see if we can tip the scales this season. So far, the highest concentration of large alligators we've found has been right here underneath the basin bridge. But that would make sense if the fish population is concentrating in the area as well. Now we're a little earlier today. This is, this is, this is prawn. We can go in them open water places and not sweat too bad before the sun comes up. That's him. 
turning, he's spinning. He's doing something kind of cuckoo. Oh, got off, of course. Of course he did. They are everywhere, and I don't know if he took off or if he's just sitting on the bottom. I don't see a line. He might still be there. Oh, he's right there. <laughs> wow. Ready? Yep. Two. A pistol and 25 <laughs> yards. Did I hit him? I was right under him. It looked like you hit him. Right here in front of us. Watch, 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 watch. He's right here. He's right here. Coming up right, right one up. So, see him. That's him. Whoa. Wow, wearing the gloves. Hang on, we go. We're about to see him. You want to turn the motor off? He's tired. Oh, got him in the tail. That was a pretty shot. I probably should have taken it. Like tuna fishing. Bring them up, they take your drag. Bring them up, they take your drag. <laughs> Golly, where you going, dude? Can't be but 10 foot deep.
All right, Bubba. Any day now. All right. I'm gonna have to do the old tufa again. I'm gonna have to grab that one in the back. <laughs> there we go. Now we got it. All right. This is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna walk them around the boat, and I'm gonna come back on this side. That way, I'm on the right side. If he lets me, he wants to take off again. Oh, you sucker. All right. Yes. This is my back one. He's done. He's done. I saw uh I saw some juice. Oh boy. Do it. I have to. Let's roll him. That's why you never put your hand inside a gator's mouth. For when they do that, that was very close. How close was it? <laughs> He's still alive. But that's part of gator hunting, y'all. We're not, we not just random people that's coming out here doing it. This size and above causes, uh, you know, can start causing problems for small animals. We can get a little bit bigger than that, small children. And I'm not gonna make it sound like gators bad. I mean, gators are just doing what they have evolved to do for forever. And uh, of course, we're gonna get a little bit of backlash from them when we're trying to harvest them. But if any, if just anybody was doing this. You saw it just happen. If I wouldn't have known to keep my hands out of the snap zone, that could have been very bad. The gator has uh, about 80 teeth, and I think they go through 
five or six hundred teeth in a lifetime. They're all hollow. As one falls out, they replace it. And we've seen it several times in gator skulls that we've redone over the years. The taxidermist will show you hundreds of gators, uh, hundreds of gators' teeth, about that long. But only the little bit of tip of them is, uh, is solid. The rest of them is hollow so that they could grow that next one. A shark grows the whole tooth and just one falls out and another one moves in place. The gator's teeth will come up within each other. He's still doing his thing. Give him time to expire while we look for the next one. All right, guys, we're over here at Guardian Preservation Systems today. I'm here with Jim and Josh, and they're going to show us exactly what their product does. Certainly. What we have here is a moisture barrier material, and what we're going to do is package up any type of equipment, uh, electronics, pumps, anything you can think of for long-term storage. Our process uh, involves uh, purging with inert gas. What that does is removes all the oxidizing agents from the atmosphere. That item cannot be stored long-term without any risk of corrosion, moisture, debris, anything like that. Is there any size restrictions on the products? Can it be real small? Can it be real big? Or is there certain sizes y'all can and can't do? We can go from anything as small as you can imagine, basically up to the size of a vehicle or even bigger if you'd like. How long does the material actually protect what you're putting inside of it? It's, uh, it's indefinite. Once this item's stored and created, as you see uh, in the process we're about to do here, there's really no time limit to it. Uh, basically what we'll do is gonna actually purge it inside of this bag with nitrogen. And at that point, uh, we actually use our meters and sensors to detect how much moisture is left inside. At that point, once we uh, find an acceptable level, we'll actually go ahead and vacuum seal that equipment. Um, basically at that point it's preserved. So Mr. Jim, once this is all done, how do you know what's inside the bag if you have several products? Oh, good question. Let me show you on this finished product over here. On every package we do, we put one of our Guardian chips on. I've got a, a little app on my phone that'll read that chip. I can come up and scan it and within just a few seconds, it'll pull up any documents, pictures that we put on here. And here's the meters before, a picture of the gearbox, the finish wrap product. All that information is right here, basically on the chip, where we've got all the pictures, the documents, inspection reports, steel mill certifications, hydro testing reports, whatever the client wants to give us to associate with that Guardian chip. So y'all could have a hundred, if not more, boxes all the same size. Right. All you need is that little chip on there and you can walk through your warehouse and see exactly what's in every single box. That's correct. That is awesome. Yes, sir. So uh, Jude, one other thing we do is we build crates to fit the equipment. Like these crates here we built with the okay. Cornerstone uh, valve seats. We build vinyl jackets oh, goodness. to fit. Okay, this is a 50 by 35 foot jacket here for a customer, but we build custom fit jackets for single flying lead, reel covers, calm buoys, any, any type of equipment that needs to be protected from the UV. Make a great fit for boats and ATVs as well. So any size. Any, any size. Golly. Any size. Check them out, guardianpreservation.net. And remember, you know the line. Team Voodoo knows how to get around South Louisiana, and that's in a Chevrolet Silverado Z71, nicknamed Ogin. Service Chevrolet Cadillac is your access to the latest and greatest Chevy has to offer. 
located on Ambassador Cafe. This is your one-stop shop for Cadillac and Chevrolet. Stop in today and let them put you in your next adventure. Life in the swamp is extremely volatile. From the constant rise and fall of the water levels to the constant overpopulation of alligators after a year of breeding, the key to the hunt is patience and perseverance. What we need to do is park in that shade and just give it a minute and let's see if we relocate him. He's, that's him. The big ones get smarter. And, you know, as soon as a boat passes, they're going under. As soon as they stop hearing the boat, you know, they'll pop back up. I'm seeing a bunch of, uh, these look like a bunch of seven, eight footers in here, some good mature females. And there has to be a big male in here with them. There's no way that they're gonna be all by themselves in here. Then. Big males are going to be in here. And you can't smell it back at home, but this boat stinks. The, if uh, you shoot a gator and they just ate something and they pass it back through their mouth, full of that acid, that old nasty stuff, oof, man, it's just 100 degree weather, no wind. Stinky, 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 stinky. Chum the water a little bit.
four. I got blood on my boot. I'm about to wash it now. With two 10 footers in the boat for the day, it's time to call it quits. Until tomorrow. Next week, the gators get larger and the struggle gets harder. As for now, check out our YouTube channel to see all the adventures we've been on so far and keep up with us daily on Facebook and Instagram as well. Until next week, I'm your guide through the swamp, Jude Mikay, and this has been another Team Voodoo Adventure.